Big Slung Heritage Farmhouse is a 300-year-old heritage property with an ancient history that is growing into a popular tourist destination. Situated deep in Western Sikkim, Big Slung is a five-hour drive either from Gangtok or from the closest airport at Bagdogra. My name is Dikki Yangchen. I run this homestay in a remote corner in West Sikkim, Big Stang Heritage Farmhouse. I'm the 14th generation in Sikkim, so I decided to move back to my ancestral property and uh, start something here. So my basic idea was uh, to revive agriculture because I think all heritages throughout the world, the common link between all of us is agriculture. A lot of our agricultural land is lying fallow because most of our spring waters were drying up. So what I decided to do is move back here, but at the same time, try and you know, revive whatever agriculture that we could. Started building cottages so that I could run it together. Because I only have cottages that are ethnically and traditionally built, you know. So uh, our traditional style of building is, makes a lot of sense for the Himalayan mountains, you know, because it's a very seismic zone. So what we do is we have light structures on top and uh, it's mostly wooden. I've uh, strategically placed the cottages in agricultural wastelands. So either in places where uh, yeah, it was too rocky to do any agriculture or like in these bends where there was not enough like sun or like between bamboo grooves, you know. But it worked out for me because here what I can offer is the privacy, the space, the time. You feel like it's your own house once you come here. I guess it's like a blend of like offering all the amenities of a modern resort with the warmth of homes too. Rikstang is a tourism destination, you know. It's not a stopgap between your two places where you want to travel. So those who want to really understand what Sikkim is about, the authenticity of it, yeah, it's that kind of people that are, we are interested to, uh, in catering to also. Well, I'm taking you to Onku, which means a uh, pond in Lhokhe. I'm we're going to the pool now, the infinity pool, the first of its kind in Sikkim. <laughs> this is all cardamom, large cardamom here. This is guava. There's some original Sikkimese mandarin here. The zenga, a star house of five peaks, also revered as our guardian deity, Kanchan Zenga, right there. And in the early mornings, especially during the winters and during the season time, you have the reflection of the mountains, like in the morning you must have seen, directly on the pool. Jira or the bar here. The pool bar. This is the spa, the menchu. Men means uh, medicine in Loke, Butia, and chu means water. So this is medicinal water. The spa is called menchu. Yeah, now I'm taking you to the traditional hot stone bath. This is where we normally offer the traditional hot stone bath. The idea is to keep yourself hydrated throughout. We still use wood, right? In the old days, it used to be one whole big tree trunk that's scooped out and then you, you, you put the... These are like actual stones that are heated and put it into the hot stone. And then the, the stones heat up the water. Then we add the herbs, the herbs that are cooked in the water to a certain degree, you know. This is a traditional thing that uh, the Sikkimese people are known to have done. But I don't think uh, anywhere else in Sikkim we have something that's traditionally still maintained and still practiced. It takes a lot of hours. It takes, it's a very laborious process. And we do not preheat the water. So there's no geysers around here. And one way a guest can tell whether the water has been preheated or not. When the stones heat up the water, the water doesn't cool down at all. It remains hot throughout. So you can stay in for about an hour, two hours, whatever your intake is, you know. There are some people who can barely stay for about 10, 10 minutes. There are some people who can stay for about two hours, three hours. So we don't have any fixed timing for this. It's up to the guest and up to the individual. Yeah. 
Bigstang um, in Mere or in Lepcha, it means uh, a place where the tiger killed a cow, Big Mon. And in Hlokke or uh, Butia, it means a uh, place with a wide variety of special stones. This is called the Gomjor, the entrance to the main house. We're going into the dining or the Dunga. All old traditional Sikhimese houses were built something like this. You have like just one uh, big wooden pillar holding up the whole house. Then you have uh, walls, uh, wood stone walls that are about three feet in thickness. We're now entering the living area. This is my great grandfather who translated the history of Sikkim by Maharani Hishya Doma. Uh, 1908. He was also the teacher of the Sir Tashi Namgyal, the 11th king of uh, Sikkim. The queen, when she visited the cave in uh, Raune, or the cave down there in 1940, my grandfather had gone to receive her. Those are paintings by my great grandfather. The Lhansi Monastery, which was built in 1850, is a branch of the Sangchen Pema Yangtze Monastery. One thing that is very special about the Pema Yangtze Monastery, of which Lhansi Gumba is a branch of, is that uh, the monks of Pema Yangtze are supposed to be of pure breed. They are supposed to be Thasangs, you know. They are the only monks who are allowed to coronate the kings of Sikkim. It is a very significant monastery and very unique to Sikkim. And uh, we are one of the branches of the monastery of uh, Pema Yangtze in Peling. There are three ethnic communities in Sikkim. The Marys or the Lepchas, the Lhopos or the Bhutias, and the Nepalese. Indigenously, uh, the Lepchas were here much before any other uh, community was here. If you really look at it, the Lepchas are believed to be the original inhabitants of the land, which was not uh, demarcated into Sikkim. All the demarcation and the actual setting was after the monarchy came. So because of Big Stang Heritage Farmhouse, I've uh, been invited to lots of conferences and, you know, places like Delhi, Guwahati, you know, even uh, different colleges to speak about uh, certain issues. Now, I noticed that when I go to mainland India, First of all, I look different, you know. So it takes a long time to convince them that we are Indians, <laughs> you know, that we're part of India now. The last uh, conference that I attended in Delhi is not a conference, but it was a full fellowship program that I attended. And I was trying to convince them, let's do something about bridging the gap between mainland India and the Northeast. For starts, let's put our history into the syllabuses of different schools so that there's more reach. There's so less that is being said about us if you want an integrated India, I think it's important to have the history so that we, we know a little bit about, you know, each other. We know the history of India like, <laughs> like the back of hands and the world history. I'd rather come from a small place and know about the world than come from a big place, a first developed, like, you know, first world country and know nothing about the rest of the world. I feel very fortunate that way, you know. It's almost winter now. It's been a long and incredible journey. Eye-opening, humbling, and heartwarming. A learning experience to meet the people, local communities, especially the youths, the guardians of this ancient history, indigenous knowledge, culture, and their rich natural environment. I leave the Northeast of India with a strong feeling of hope, hope that the future will be safe and secure. 
for travelers and people like me to come back and discover for themselves this unique part of India.